judges self get a judgment for no confidence appeal. Despite brazen attacks by gunmen countrywide and a U.S. rival advisory, Top Cop says there is no increase in crime. United States now requesting social media information for visa applicants. And in sport, Pakistan shock World Cup title holder England despite Root Butler tons. These and more coming up after the break. Stay with us. At OptiVision Care, we value the power of your sight. And with our team of eye care professionals, you'll be in good hands. Come experience our comprehensive eye examination using state-of-the-art technology and specialized diagnostic equipment at four convenient locations. In Mahaika, Grove, Giftland Mall, and East Street. At Optique, we care, you see. Call us today, 227-7744. on windows and doors, fully equipped to handle all your commercial projects. Whether you're constructing a small or large commercial building, residential property, or just upgrading your home, they got you covered. Beeson Windows and Doors, providing unmatched quality windows for your home, office, and commercial building. Located at 1228 Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, call 662-4197 or 622-6943. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick bet for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Get your documents ready to be registered. Are you eligible to be registered during GCOM's house-to-house registration exercise? Then you must have either a birth certificate, a valid passport, naturalization certificate, or certificate of registration, adoption certificate. Married women may also be asked to present their marriage certificate. Individuals who had a name change, which is not stated on their birth certificate, must present a deed poll along with their original birth certificate. Get your documents ready now and prepare to be registered. If you were previously registered, you will need to be registered again. Be on the lookout. It is your right. Make it your responsibility. For more information, contact GCOM on 2250-27729 or 223-9653. Email pro at gcom.org.gy. Contact your nearest GCOM registration office or visit our website www.gcom.org.gy. For the best in truck spares, Daff and Cummings, it's A1 Auto Value New Road Freedom Hoop on the west side. Check them out today for seals, alternators, filters, air valves, Pistons and rings, air dryers, shocks, bearings, and a whole lot more. Parts and accessories for cars and minibuses. Call today on 254-0890. 64 New Road Freedom Hoop on the west coast of Demerara. A1 Auto Value. Performance without compromise. Your one-stop decor solution for gala dinners, weddings, birthdays, cocktail functions, backdrops, props, and more. Check out exclusive decor design, ground floor, city mall. We have a wide variety to suit your stylish seating and table decor, exclusive centerpieces, colorful marrow, and much more. Working with a small budget? No problem. We've got you covered. Call 225-4434 or 657-0166. We listen, we create, you enjoy. Good evening and welcome to this, our Monday, June 3, 2019 edition of News Update. I'm Sandy Ramutar, our top story this evening. The Caribbean Court of Justice is still to be notified by its president of a date for the ruling of the consolidated appeals into the December 21 no confidence motion. An official at the court told his newscast today that based on information, there is no delay in the judgment as the judges have been continuing to put together their findings. Here are the details. As Guyanese await the ruling from the Caribbean Court of Justice, it is anticipated that a judgment will be delivered well before 90 days. When contacted, the court said it has not been notified of a judgment date for the ruling. 
The appellate court told this newscast that its judges are working assiduously to deliver the judgment in the shortest possible time. It said that attorneys for the cases will be notified three days before the official date for the ruling on the three consolidated matters. Judgments from the court are generally delivered within 90 days after the end of any hearing. Oral arguments in the case were heard on May 9 and 10. The appellate court will have to decide whether 33 or 34 votes were required to validate the December 21 no confidence motion. The ruling will decide whether elections must be held before its 2020 due date or if the coalition government gets to continue its term in office. Once the court rules for early elections, it will have to say what happens next as the constitutional deadline for elections expired on March 21. The ruling too will determine whether Chardas Persaud, a dual citizen's vote, was valid when he voted voted with the opposition to validate the motion and whether the government stood resigned on the night of December 21 when the no-confidence motion was successfully passed. Public Service Minister Tabitha sarbo Haley is being accused of an authoritarian approach after she reportedly unilaterally fired all the personnel staff of the Department of Public Service on Friday. Sarbo Haley, who took up the post just a few weeks ago, is accused of taking such a drastic action without no probable cause. Minister with Responsibilities for Public Service, Tabitha Sarbo Haley, has come in for criticism after she was accused of sacking employees attached to the personal department at the Lot 164 Waterloo Street office, Church Town. The minister is said to be usurping the power of the permanent secretary, now a non-existent position at the Department of Public Service. Up to news time, the minister remained unavailable to give a comment on the matter. Minister Tabitha Sarabo Haley was appointed following the resignation of Dr. Rupert Rupnarine, a dual citizen. The minister, who assumed the position just five weeks ago, is accused of sacking the staff as she no longer required their services. The staff was said to be excurted by the police force out of the Lot 164 Waterloo Street office, Churchdown, sometime on Friday. Against the reality of brazen robberies by gunmen on almost a daily basis and a warning by the United States urging travelers to avoid Guyana due to a spike in crime, the country's Commissioner of Police, Gov. Leslie James, debunks claims that there is no increase in crime here. Commissioner James actually told reporters today that crime has decreased when compared to last year. Citizens widely believe that crime is on the increase in Guyana. Supporting this claim is the U.S. that recently alerted travelers to Guyana to take extra precaution when coming. The U.S. stated that robbery under arms and murder are common before urging persons not to walk or drive at nights, not to resist any robbery attempt, and not to reveal any wealth. However, the Commissioner of Police, Leslie James, is claiming that crime is not on the increase. In fact, Commissioner James is reporting a decrease in crime from January to date in comparison to the same period last year. I wish to advise very, very clearly there is no upsurge in crime in the state of Guyana. We are operating at a minus 2.7%. While claiming that there have been what he termed as sensational crimes, he assured residents and visitors that Ghana is not a haven for crime. But I wish to assure the populace and by extension visitors to the state of Ghana and our residents abroad within the diaspora that crime is not on the increase in our state. This is in line with the position of the government. Last Friday, Director General of the Ministry of the Presidency, Joseph Harmon, claimed that Guyana is safe to work and live. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. iNews Guyana is reporting that an 18-year-old lad from Supernam Esiquivacos was Sunday allegedly stabbed to death by his 17-year-old friend. Clive Osborne received stab wounds to his head, chest and abdomen. According to the website, Osborne and his friend were imbibing at a shop when an argument ensued at around seven hours. Reports are that the friend whipped out a knife and dealt Osborne several stabs about his body. The teen was picked up in an unconscious state and rushed to the hospital, where he was pronounced dead on arrival. 
The suspect has since been arrested and is assisting with the investigation. We tell you now that several communities in Region 9, including Aishalton, have been cut off as heavy rains lead to a collapse of a large portion of the main access road linking the community and other villages to the town of Lethem. The four-month-long rainy season for the hinterland has just begun and already it is having devastating impact on Region 9. To show Vice Charlton Village in Latem, Michael Thomas told this newscast that heavy rains and floods over the past two weeks has led to a major access road washing away and a culvert destroyed, cutting off any land access to Latem and other surrounding areas. And yes, of course, it has been affecting the business sector mainly because you know we ha we have good to bring in, we have fuel to bring in, and a lot of stuff that would be sold on in the shops in, in, in not only in Aishalton but the surrounding villages also. Yes, um, mm -hmm. so it is it is just one of the hundreds of culverts on the way to Lethem that has been damaged. So yesterday we were trying to take in some, some patients on road because our medevac is down at the moment, the Rams medevac is down at the moment, so we were trying to get in patients from Aishalton to Lethem. Mm -hmm structures and so on and so we couldn't we couldn't pass there so the the, the ambulance had to turn back to overnight in my shelter oh, and, and today again i saw them leaving trying to trying to pass that broken road so that has also you know set back a lot of things out other than the business and mm. other other things. Thomas blames the collapse of the culvert and badly weakened infrastructure and implores the relevant authority to speedily address the situation. No, what what really caused the culvert to collapse is the movement of heavy vehicles, heavy vehicles going into the mining area of Marodi and Parabara. Mm. That is what contributed also to the damage of the, the culvert itself. According to the Tushao, the condition of the road for the past three weeks is only expected to worsen as June month is the peak of the rainy season which lasts until August in those areas. Tushao Thomas explained that in 2017, the village received assistance from the Regional Democratic Council to fix the road and last year, help was provided from the Brazilian Army which was in Guyana to drill wells in the Rupununi. This time around, the Tushao believes assistance from the central government may be required. The ministries of public infrastructure and communities have not yet commented on the situation. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. You're watching MTV's News Update. More news after the break. Stay with us. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Secure your property, secure your life, get the best security service from us at KGM Security Services Incorporated. Highly trained armed and unarmed officers at affordable rates. We offer armed mobile patrols, personal security, cash escort, alarm monitoring, quick response units, also rental of executive vehicles with armed guards. 74 Axora Avenue, Bel Air Park, Georgetown. Contact us on 663-3227-699-0084 or 654-1800. KGM Security Services Incorporated, we are your source for security.
everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Summer is just around the corner, and this year we're giving you a visacation. It's easy. Get your GBTI visa card and travel to your dream summer destinations or shop all you want online. With VisaCation, you get to win prizes when you use your GBTI Visa card between June 1st and August 31st. Don't have a Visa card? Visit your nearest GBTI branch or go to www.gbtibank.com. GBTI, we see Guyana through your eyes. Welcome back. You're watching MTV's News Update. Months on, the state has failed to pay Justice Charles Ramson in excess of $12 million, money the High Court ordered to be paid for three separate cases. The retired judge says the slothfulness is not only unacceptable, but an attempt to frustrate him. Commissioner of Information, who former Minister of State Joseph Harmon quote-unquote dismissed, Justice Charles Ramson has not received any money from the state despite the High Court order that he be paid. Justice Ramson is owed in excess of $12 million, judgment made in three separate cases. The retired judge, who still holds on to the post of Commission of Information, is owed for the occupancy of his house as a state office, his vacation allowance, staff and his salary. There's an outstanding balance together with costs of in the region of $4 million. On the second occasion, the, uh, Justice Cincinnati made an order that the payments in, in excess of $9 million should be made, and that was not paid. Until today, it's not paid. And that was since the, uh, January, July of 19, 2018. When the Commissioner of Information was told to move from the Ministry of the Presidency, it was agreed that his East Street Georgetown property will be used as his office and it will incur rent. When he moved, his staff was told to stay at the Ministry, rendering the office virtually crippled. Justice Ramson was forced to pay persons to assist him monies that he paid from his pocket. He believes that the government is attempting to frustrate him. I believe they, be, they are of the view that the, uh, the Treasury is personal property for them. I, that is my understanding from the, 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 the lackadaisical approach to court orders. That is not how things are done in government. I was the Attorney General and I used to ensure that payments were made based on court orders within a reasonable time. Once there is no uh, save of the proceedings by a higher court. And in this case, they have no such stay. However, last year, Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu stated that the Commissioner of Information has been fired as of March 2018. PM Nagamutu claimed that Justice Ramson has not been executing his mandate but bagging a handsome salary every month. He further said the post will be filled by someone who is impartial and can execute the responsibilities of the office. However, despite the PM claiming he was fired by the then state minister, under Section 6.1 of the Access to Information Act, it prescribes that only the president can remove the commissioner of information. The commissioner can only be removed on the grounds that he is insolvent has been convicted of an offence which involves a moral turpitude, is unfit to continue in office by reason of infirmity of mind or body, or had or has acquired a such financial or other interest as is likely to affect prejudicially his functions as Commissioner of Information. The Act also says, before removing the Commissioner of Information from office, the President shall afford the Commissioner an opportunity to make representations. Godfrey Brooms, MTV 
News update. Nearly all applicants of the U.S. visas will have to provide five years' worth of information from their social media pages and profiles, email IDs and phone numbers under the new rules adopted to enhance vetting of foreign nationals seeking to enter the United States. The U.S. State Department has adopted a new policy under which most visa applicants will be required to submit their social media details to enhance vetting of foreign nationals seeking entry into the country. The State's Department regulation said persons would have to submit social media names and five years' worth of email addresses and phone numbers. Diplomatic and official visa applicants will be exempted from the newly adopted measures. It is estimated that the proposal will affect 14.7 billion persons annually. Visa applicants that lie about their social media use could face serious immigration consequences as a result of the new policy. Previously, only applicants who needed additional vetting, such as persons who had been parts of the world controlled by terrorist groups, would need to hand over the data. But now applicants will have to give up their accounts' names on a list of social media platforms and also volunteer the details of their accounts on any sites not listed. For now, the drop-down menu only includes major social media websites, but applicants soon will be able to list all sites that they use. The social media identifiers will be incorporated into a background check review against watch lists generated by the U.S. government. Minister of Agriculture Noel Holder is disappointed that Trinidad and Tobago has ordered a ban on Guyana's poultry meat entering into the Twin Island Republic. A total of 56 duck farms located on the coast of Guyana have been temporarily closed due to an ongoing spread of an undiagnosed disease affecting ducks. This is according to Agriculture Minister Noel Holder. In direct response to decisions taken by Trinidad and Tobago's Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries to ban all poultry from Guyana entering Trinidad and Tobago, Minister of Agriculture Noah Holder has made it categorically clear that steps taken by the Trinidad government is both premature and unethical. Mm. We want to assure the general public that it's safe to consume all poultry products. And while the disease incident report to the World Animal Health Organization, May this is the country response. We are disappointed at the premature and excessive response of the Ministry of Agriculture, Lands and Fisheries of Trinidad and Tobago, mm. which has placed a ban on all poultry products raw and cooked coming from Guyana. Okay. So we think it's a bit unfortunate that they were so precipitate in doing this without even talking to our people. Last week, Trinidad and Tobago's Minister of Agriculture, Clarence Rambarad, had advised that all raw and cooked poultry meat from Guyana be banned entry into the country. With that, Minister Holder criticized both the veterinary officers of Guyana and the Trinidad and Tobago's agriculture ministries for failure to accurately communicate before taking such a drastic step. Holder explained that at present, several samples are slated to be examined by a lab at Cornhill University in the United States. Based on the signs and the symptoms observed in ducks affected by the disease, the minister explained that the findings could confirm a case of duck virus hepatitis. This has now, the samples have left and they are awaiting confirmation of what it is, or not confirmation, but a determination of what it is. And that's going on as we speak in, um, in, in, in the U.S. The Ghana Livestock Development Authority, GLDA, has since ordered the closure of 56 poultry farms, including its hatchery. The ministry is also assuring persons that the disease does not appear to be contagious to humans or other animals. Reporting from TV News Update, LaShawna Gomes, Cornelius. The driver of the truck involved in Saturday's gruesome agricola crash which claimed the life of a seven-year-old girl is seeking to clear his name and through his attorney James Bond, the man denied any negligence. Daniel Larry Welcome said that he was not negligent, careless or reckless when the child met her demise, noting that he was proceeding 20 kilometers per hour when he was forced to crash into the median by a taxi driver. Bond in a statement on behalf of Welcome said he was completely unaware that the child was on the median. He said no adult should have a child perched on a medium in the middle of a busy highway. This was approximately 30 feet from the pedestrian crossing. According to the statement, investigations thus far have revealed no skid marks. The truck did not carry in into the eastern lanes of the highway, neither did it smash into the light poles a mere 5 feet away. It practically bumped onto the medium and rested there. 
The man expressed his condolences to the relatives of the child. Following the accident, the welcome was severely beaten by residents with an iron pipe, and according to his lawyer, he suffered a fractured skull, severe concussions to the arms, back and neck, along with gaping wounds to the scalp. Bond told the newsroom during a telephone interview Sunday night that his client was taken to the hospital. The attorney said welcome is distraught and grief stricken at the death of the Sierra Benjamin. He had just dropped off his little daughter who is about the same age as the child killed in the accident and as such the images of the incident is haunting him. It was some time after 4 p.m. when the truck crashed into Benjamin who attempted to cross the road with her aunt Simone Barry. Benjamin of Kitty Georgetown was spinned under the truck on top of the road's median. She died instantly and her body was cut in two. A family of Alexander Street Kitty is maintaining that the Environment Protection Agency has continued to turn a blind eye on their concerns of air and noise pollution caused from a large commercial generator placed in close proximity to their bedrooms. The generator along with a large water compressor would be on for hours at a time, the concerned family is claiming. Here's Lashana Cole from the news with the details. 49-year-old Shini Rampersod of Alexander Street Kitty is dissatisfied with the Environmental Protection Agency for its lackluster approach to verifying and resolving an environmental concern affecting her and her entire family. According to Rampersod, it has been exactly a year since her next-door neighbor, whom she claims operate a small hotel on the said premises, had installed a large commercial generator adjacent to her home facing her bedroom window. Rampersod's major concern is that for the past year, herself and the family have been plagued with continuous noise and air pollution due to the excess exhaust fumes and noise emanated from the generator. The homes located along some parts of Alexander Street, Kitty, are built in very close proximity to each other. Since last year, May, we have made a report to EPA and nothing has been done as yet. And we went into City Hall and nothing has been done. One time they come and they said they got to look into it. They sent a letter to me and said they have to seal the generator the 12th of December, that's last year, and nothing. So every time we get blackout and this generator comes on, we can't sleep. I have a baby here and I can't even keep the baby in the house. I have to be in and out with her. Rampersod believes that it is unfair that the owner of the business would ignore her and her family's plea for peace and comfort within their own home and strongly calls on the EPA to look into the issue. She also believes that the generator should be removed and placed somewhere else where fumes and noise would less affect her family. What they can install there to get it done? Because they have nowhere to seal. Because they have no access. When contacted, the Environmental Protection Agency confirmed that it made a visit to the location but did not get to investigate the claims of noise and air pollution, for the generator was not on and the business owner was not present. The agency said it will conduct another visit at the site later this month. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Here is Rajesh Lakhan with this week's Star Computers Tech Wrap. Good evening and welcome to the Star Technology Wrap. I'm your host Rajesh Lakhan and with me is Raiden. And this week we'll be touching on the ELO Touch solution. Raiden, tell us, what is this device all about? All right, so the ELO Touch solution basically is the next generation of digital signage and customer interaction. Basically, Rajesh, how would I put it? You're basically walking up to a virtual assistant. How it works is this. Now, you have this device, it's connected to the internet. Um, it comes with a manager called the ELO View where you can actually load all your content remotely. So you don't need to be on site. You could have this at point A and you're at point B out of the country, monitoring everything. And once you load your content, basically everything pop up. So say for example, a customer comes into your store, they want to see what you have, any specials today. They can come up to this assistant. It would actually state all your specials. They can interact with it. Um, 
printer ticket and then just take it to the cashier, oh, I'm taking the special today. But a lot of industries you can work for. You can work for retail, you work for the food industry, the hospitality industry, even the hospital, the medical industry. It would be a great solution for those as well. I, I know this will work great in the hospitality and supermarket and stuff, but you mentioned medical um, area. Tell us a little about that. All right, think about this. Now, in other developed countries, it's actually working on, they're working on it right now. But say, for example, you go to visit the clinic, the health clinic, uh -huh. and there's like 20 persons in front of you waiting to see the receptionist. Now, if you have this solution at the side, you can basically do this. Instead of just waiting on the receptionist to take all your details, you come, you punch in all your information, your name, your address, you punch in all the allergies that you have, any medication you're currently on. So when you actually, oh, and it prints a ticket from the printer that's connected. So you t when you meet to the receptionist, now you just hand this ticket. They have a barcode or something? They scan the barcode, okay. and basically all your information pop up in the system already. So it actually eliminates you having to go and explain everything to the receptionist. The receptionist has to type it out, verify, and so forth. You do all of your information input, and then all you have to do, print the ticket, carry it to the receptionist. The receptionist say, okay, you're number two, see the doctor, please hold on. Perfect. For yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a very interesting solution. We're working, we're doing some tests right now to see how we can affect, you know, all these industries and how they can actually assist and, you know, help to actually make it more efficient. Great. Coming back to the touch screen, is it your regular touch screen? Uh, well, actually, it's a tough glass. So what you can do, basically, it's made to be strong, sturdy. <laughs> the first time I saw someone do this, I, like, jump. I was like, no, it's a touch screen. You can't hit it like so, that. So but that's what you, yeah, so... Basically, it's very tough, rugged, it's made for all the industries, so it's actually consumer proof in the sense where a consumer don't have to worry, oh, when they come, they need to be gentle. I'm not saying hate it, but you know, they, they have to be gentle, they don't, don't break something. Because as you know, with your regular phone, you're so scared that if it falls, it will break. But with this touch screen solution from ELO, you don't have to worry about that. It's very rugged, it's very modern, and it's very interactive. Aside from this, you also have the, um, the point of sale solution. Yes, we have the yellow point to seal, which basically means if you have a business, you're looking to modernize it, move away from pen and paper, you can actually come to us, we put the solution together with you. We have the all-in-one ELOs, and we also have the ELO touch where you can use your own CPU or we can put together a solution for you. Great, great. Aside from all the ELOs, what else happens here at Stars? All right, so you know, every, every week we have something going on, so what I would encourage everyone to do is follow us on Facebook, and you'll stay up to date with all the promotion and all that is happening with us. Thank you, Raiden. And that's all we have for you on this week's edition of Star Technology Wrap. Do join us next week, Monday, for another edition. We now join Celine Griffith with MTV's Court Roundup. The businessman and truck driver accused of attempting to export over 20 pounds of cocaine stuffed fish out the country were today sentenced after they appeared before Magistrate Liron Daly. Amir Ali, 30, of Good Fortune, West Bank de Marara, and Baldio Persaud, 32, of Kingston Street, Seafield, Lenora, West Coast de Marara, were found guilty of trafficking 9.366 kilograms of cocaine at La Park and Cargo Shed CJIA on February 6, 2018. The court heard that Ali was the shipper and Prasad the driver, who transported boxes of frozen fish stuffed with cocaine to the cargo shed at the Chedi Jagan International Airport. During a routine search, custom officers found the quantity of cocaine stashed in the fish, which was destined for the USA. Ali and Prasad were each sentenced to four years imprisonment and fined $25 million for the offense. Meanwhile, a businessman was today hauled before the court on charges of assault and resisting arrest. Joseph McCallman denied all charges against him. The first two charges allege that on May 31 at Lacey Tong, Georgetown, he assaulted police officers Jason Price and Daniel Collins. He is also accused of behaving disorderly and resisting arrest from said officers, who are acting in the execution of their duties. Another charge read that on the same day at Lot 9, North Road, Georgetown, McCallman called Gavin Bowen a name other than his own, with the intent to annoy him. According to reports, on the day in question, McCallman and Bowen were involved in an argument. The police were summoned and as the officers attempted to arrest McCallman, he resisted. He was granted bail in the sum of $40,000 and will return to court on June 24. Reporting for MTV's Court Roundup, Celine Griffith.
Coming up after the break, MTV's sports update and more. Stay with us. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. <gasps> this is amazing. I love your tiles. Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various tiles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our tiles are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our locations to get the best in tiles. Lens, our product, your creation. Did you know almost one-third of deaths in Guyana are heart-related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol-clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Introducing the new Softex Soft toilet, toilet tissue, tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle, soft to, and every gentle touch. to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The, the choice, choice is clear. clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Planning a cleanup? We can help. Sivan's waste management skip bins can be provided for home renovation projects, yard cleanups, or construction sites. It's simple. Step one, just pick up the phone and give us a call. Step two, we deliver the skip bin size of your choice. Step three, load the skip with all of your junk. And finally, step four, we take it all away. It's that simple. Bins are also available in various sizes, so there's no job that's too big or too small. Call Sivan's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156. Are you invited to that important event but don't know what to wear or frustrated you're wearing the same dress as everyone else? You crave for this exclusive look? Then do just that with dresses from Exclusive Dresses to Impress. Visit Exclusive Dresses to Impress at Giveland Mall. Contact number 6570166. Ultra Lubricants, the leading lubricants for tropical conditions, has been serving you for over 40 years, extending the life cycle of your vehicle's engine by protecting it from wear and corrosion, removes impurities, and reducing frequent vehicle oil changes. Ultra Lubricants is for every market, from two-wheel light vehicle to trucks, construction, agriculture equipment, mining activities, and boating. Ultra Lubricants, world-class lubricants for tropical conditions. Distributed by Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc and available nationwide. Welcome to MTV's Sports Update. The second edition of the Global T20 Canada Giraffe has been shifted to June 9, with many Guyanese cricketers registered. The tournament is set to still facilitate more Caribbean players. In the inaugural tournament, CWI registered a team with a number of Caribbean players participating. In this edition, President Ricky Skerritt, having recently formed a partnership with Cricket Canada's President Ranjit Saini, will participate in Cricket Canada's activities via a Cricket West Indies B team. CWI will allow teams from Canada to participate in the CWI Men's Colonial Medical Insurance Super 50 Cup and the CWI Regional Under-19 Female Tournament that were held in Trinidad and Tobago. The second season of the Global T20 will comprise of 22 matches, including three playoff games, and the finals will be played on Sunday, August 11, 2019. Last year's tournament consisted of six teams, the Vancouver Knights, West Indies B, Winnipeg Hawks, Montreal Tigers, Edmonton Royals, and Toronto Nationals. Chelsea Lee, reporter of MTV, Sports Update. 
England suffered a stunning upset at the hands of inspired Pakistan in their second World Cup match at Trent Bridge. The hosts and favourites were surprisingly lacklustre in the field as Pakistan, roared on by the noisy and vibrant fans, posted 348 for 8. Even though England have made a habit of overhauling such targets, they were still faced with having to pull off the most successful chase in World Cup history. And they were denied by the rejuvenated Pakistanis, who had lost their previous 11 one-day internationals, including a 4-0 series defeat by England prior to the tournament and then a humiliation against West Indies on this ground on Friday. Despite Joe Root's 107, the first century of the tournament, and a 75-ball ton from Joe's Butler, England were restricted to 3-34 for 9 to lose by 14 runs. In a tournament where the 10 teams play each other once to determine the semi-finals, there are plenty of opportunities for England to get their campaign back on track, starting with Bangladesh and Cardiff on Saturday. Pakistan, renowned for veering from shambolic to subline in global tournaments, will look to continue their reservance in Sri Lanka and Bristol on Friday. Here's how the action went down. Down the ground, first sign of real aggression. Yeah, on the pull, on the pull. Oh, scoop. He went down so early for the scoop there. That's a gorgeous shot. And it's hit just wide. No, brilliant, brilliant. Very positive start. That is a, a real statement of intent. Big shot, it's a sky. That could be end of Hafiz. Goes big again, it's bigger and mightier for six. Thrown up, he invited the hit. Down the ground. Wokes has already taken a good one, takes another good one. Slow ball first up, oh, it beats the fielder. A race away for four, frustration for Stokes. And he goes the aerial route over mid on. Chipped, but chipped a long way by Hafiz. Sweetly struck, but only as far as Wokes in the deep. Slow ball muscled away by Hassan Ali. Firmly hit. What an end to this innings for Pakistan. The funeral of former Arsenal winger Joe Santiris has been held in his hometown of Yothera, Seville. The former Sevilla captain died in a car crash at age 35 on Saturday, while a relative was also killed. The ex Spain international coffin was taken to Sevilla's Ramon Sanchez Pujun Stadium on Sunday, where it was visited by more than 11,000 fans. Later that night, thousands outside the stadium paid their respects as the coffin made its journey to Yothera. His coffin spent Sunday night in Yothera's Stone Hall, where, according to Sevilla, he spent the whole night accompanied by family and friends. The funeral took place at the nearby Santa Maria de Mesa, and his coffin was draped in the Sevilla flag. He started his career at the La Liga side as a youth player in 1994, marking his first team debut in the 1999-2000 season. Reese joined the Gunners from Sevilla in January 2004 and was part of the invincible side that went through the 2003-2004 season unbeaten, winning the Premier League. He later spent his season on a loan at Real Madrid in 2006-2007, winning the Spanish title. After leaving Arsenal in 2007, he joined Atletico Madrid and then returned to Sevilla for a second spell in 2016. The five-time Europa League winner had been playing for Spanish second division side Encho Maduro this season. Three Guyanese players of the senior men's football team, the Golden Jaguars, were selected to participate in a one-month pre-season camp in Brazil, which kicked off this weekend. The camp comes on the heels of a historic visit to Brazil last week, where Guyana Football Federation President Wayne Ford met with Brazilian Football Federation President Rogério Caboclo. The GFF is proud to announce that Ryan Hackett of Fruta Conquerors, Kelsey Benjamin of Georgetown Football Club and Cece Norville of Mile Rock FC in Linden will spend one month at Brazilian 2nd Division side where they will undergo pre-season training. 
The trio, who have been part of the Senior National Golden Jaguar setup, will be exposed to another level of training over a four-week period, with the possibility of landing a pro contract based on their performances during the period of exposure. As a matter of fact, the trio would have been part of the historic Brazilian Tran and Play camp last August, when the Senior National team spent two weeks there and would have played against the said club in a practice match. In relation to the victory, President Ford mentioned that this is the first of many such initiatives and the goal of the GFF, which is also presented in MOU to CBF President Koboklo, aimed at holistic development of the sport on and off the field of play, is to ensure that as of 40 players between the ages of 18 to 22 gain exposure in Brazil over the coming months and years. The trio would have departed the shores of Guyana last Friday for the camp, which kicked off this weekend in Brazil and is set to conclude in one month. Chelsea Lee reported of MTV Sports Update. Liverpool would travel to Qatar in December to compete at FIFA's Club World Cup after the Gulf State was named as the new host. The annual tournament, featuring the champions of six continents, will take place in the winter with Champions League winners Liverpool entering at the semi-final stage. Qatar will hold the next two editions of the tournament in 2019 and 2020. It will also host the World Cup in 2022. It had previously been reported that the Club World Cup would not take place this year after FIFA approved changes for the tournament. One of those changes was to replace it with a 24-team tournament, which would take place every four years instead of the Confederations Cup. Liverpool's last appearance in the Club World Cup came in Japan after the Champions League trumped in 2005. They lost 1-0 to South American champion Sao Paulo in the final. Real Madrid won last year's Club World Cup, beating the United Arab Emirates Al Ain 4 1 in the final in December for the third title in as many years. President of the Ghana Badminton Association, Gokram Ramdani, has been appointed Deputy Chairman of the Communications and Marketing for the Badminton Pan American Confederation. Ramdani was appointed to the post at the recently concluded BPAC annual general meeting, which was held in Nanning, China, in the framework of the Sudirman Cup and Badminton World Federation. He will serve for the period of 2019 to 2023. Ramdani disclosed that he is very pleased to have been appointed the position to help with the development of international badminton and Guyana. He mentioned he is also happy to know that his work and contribution to the discipline is being recognized by the highest international bodies. The Pan American Badminton Confederation, BPAC, is the governing body of badminton in the Americas and is recognized as such by the World Badminton Federation. It was founded in 1976 and is currently composed of 37 member associations. Chelsea Lee, reported of MTV, Sports Update. Competitors of the second round of the Ghana Motor Racing and Sports Club's 2019 Drag Championship are being urged to register as early as possible. Taking into consideration what took place during round one with the large number of competitors registered at the last minute, the executive committee of the GMRSC decided it would be best that competitors register early. Round one in March saw an action-packed, crowd-filled and incident-free start to the 2019 drag season. Team Mohammed proved once again that they are not to be messed with when their famous Nissan GTR Goliath remained undefeated and seated on his throne as the king of the strip. Round 1 also saw the debut of Team Mohammed's Ikanu Magnus GTR along with the return of Mark Mad Max Menezes. The second leg of the 2019 drag season has officially been set for June 23 at the South Dakota circuit from 9 hours. Chelsea Lee, reporter of MTV, Sports Update. More news after the break. Stay with us. Ultra Lubricants, the leading lubricants for tropical conditions, has been serving you for over 40 years, extending the life cycle of your vehicle's engine by protecting it from wear and corrosion, removes impurities, and reducing frequent vehicle oil changes. Ultra Lubricants is for every market, from two-wheel light vehicle to trucks, construction, agriculture equipment, mining activities, and boating. Ultra Lubricants, world-class lubricants for tropical conditions. Distributed by Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc and available nationwide. Welcome back. You're still with MTV's News Update. Canada has announced that it is shutting its embassy in the Venezuelan capital, Caracas, temporarily. The reason, it says, is that President Nicolas Maduro's Venezuelan government has taken steps to limit the ability of foreign embassies to function. Canada is one of more than 50 nations that recognize opposition leader Juan Guaido as Venezuela's acting president. Canadians in Venezuela will now have to travel to neighboring Colombia for consular assistance. Canadian Foreign Minister Christa Freeland said her government had been left with no choice because Canadian diplomats' visas were expiring at the end of the month. 
She said the visa could not be renewed if Canada was no longer in a position to obtain diplomatic accreditation under the Maduro regime. On international scene, Sudan's military have been condemned for their violent attack on protesters in the capital, Khartoum, which reportedly left at least 13 dead. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres called for an independent investigation, saying he was alarmed by reports that officers had opened fire in a hospital. The U.S. said it was a brutal crackdown, while the U.K. called it outrageous. Sudan has been governed by a military council since President Omar al-Bashir was overthrown in a coup in April. The leaders of the pro-democracy movement, who demand that the civilian government take over the ruling of the country, said they were stopping all contract with the transitional military council and called a general strike. And that has brought us to the end of regional and international news. Now let's take a look at the Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 821. Let's now turn our attention to the Demar Harbour Bridge and the Burmese River Bridge schedules. And that's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. CCJ judges still putting together judgment for no confidence appeal. Despite brazen attacks by gunmen countrywide and a U.S. survival advisory, Topcop says there is no increase in crime. United States now requesting social media information for visa applicants. And in sport, Pakistan shocked World Cup title holder England despite root and butler tons. Catch your broadcast at 23 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.